From San Diego, California, this is a One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone, romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm Tony DeLorenzo, your co-host, along with my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call or text us on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663 or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. In today's show, we're talking about what you can do to set yourself up to have sex before you go out on your date night. And there's a quote from Ernestine Ulmer that simply states, life is uncertain, eat dessert first. And we're going to be having some fun with this show. <laughs> we were giggling yes. about it even before we started yes. about this idea of having dessert first. And, and can we do that as adults? Can we have dessert first? And, and it's going to be a fun show today as we talk about that. But first and foremost, we start every single One Extraordinary Marriage show with a hug. And, yes. and this is an opportunity. This is one of my most favorite parts of the show because it's an opportunity for you to hear from someone else in the One family whose marriage has been transformed and who really has a message of hope to share with everyone else in the One family. And this week's hug is sponsored by KiwiCo. And we're going to be sharing more about how this company delivers hands-on science and art projects for all ages a little bit later in the show. And the hug comes from an email message that we received that said, Hi guys, I just finished listening to the podcast about sexless marriage. And for those of you that haven't listened to that one yet, it was actually uh, episode 492. So you can go to one extraordinary marriage.com slash 492 so that you can listen to it. And she goes on to say, Elisa, I used to be just like you. I was never much into having sex with my husband. It seems like the last three or four years, maybe once a month or once every other month. If he was initiating, I just kind of ignored it and said I was tired or not in the mood. Mm. If we did do it, I wanted it to be done, close off and didn't want foreplay to last long. When mm. we were doing it, my husband would say, why don't we do this more often? And my reply was always, I don't know. Come February of this year, I discovered your podcast from a friend that I follow on here and on Facebook, and we are doing it now at least twice a week. Oh my gosh. Did you all catch that? They went from like once a month or every other month to now twice a week. And Amen. that's just been in like four or five months. Yes. Right. If I'm on my period, it's no sex, but we can still do other things. Yes. Okay. That right there. Like the period doesn't stop the, co the connection between husband and wife. She goes on to say, when I was pregnant, it was no sex. I was too scared of spotting or something else happening. Plus we had to wait the extra six weeks. But after those six weeks to get the go ahead again, my husband was so excited to be able to have sex again. Now I know how important it is to have sex as a part of a marriage. So thankful for you too. Mm, I love it. I love it. That's so great. Oh my gosh. That's a marriage that is, that is extraordinary, right? And, it, and what I love about that hug, and even as we talk about today's show, is it, one person can create a shift. In That's a marriage, right. she changed her mindset. She changed what she was doing and look at what's happening now. And just the excitement after having a baby of being able to do this. And, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, it's interesting how just that mindset and, and how much mindset actually plays a role in the sexual intimacy between a husband and wife. Last weekend, Tony had randomly posted this question on IG uh, on the stories. And it's funny because usually I'm the one posting the questions. So whenever I see a question pop up, I'm like, who put that up there? Mm -hmm. And it was Tony. And he had posted, would you rather have sex before or after you go out on a date? Right. Mm -hmm. Completely random question, but you know, something that was, you know, he was thinking about and, and 65% of you said after. Okay. Which, which totally makes sense. You know, it's kind yeah. of this whole, like, you know, you get dressed up, you have the meal, you go out, it's all good. You come home, everybody's expecting sex. Well, and I think that's, what's been portrayed just recently we we wrapped up our marriage and media series mm -hmm. and and we've learned that you know media specifically tv media that's the way it's portrayed so that's the way we see it mm -hmm. you know it's everything happens the the getting ready the the romantic dinner or whatever that date may be to then come home and have sex right it's like it's like the punctuation mark yeah at the i end. don't think i've ever seen anywhere where somebody has sex and then goes out well that uh, yeah i can't think of a I single can't think time of it. if you guys have you know you can always hit us up and let us know and, and what you mean by if you guys have is like if you've seen that portrayed yeah if you've seen that portrayed or something of that like it th that re that reversal of hey we are going to have dessert before we go out well and that got me to thinking you know even as we were preparing for the show i'm like i wonder how many times that tony's had the expectation that we're going to have sex after date night right to only because mm -hmm. tony for those of you that don't know, Tony tends to have a higher desire in our marriage than I do, right? Like there are many times where I could go out on a date night and be like, yeah, I'm coming home. 
right? And yeah, and that's happened, right? You know, we go out, we have this great dinner and, and you know, maybe we'll have a beer or two, this fabulous meal, top it off with a cheesecake like we did uh, a couple weeks ago with some friends and only to have us get home. And then I say something like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm too tired or, uh, you know, my favorite, especially after the cheesecake is I, I ate too much. Like and, I and I've said that one um, many a times myself, you know, or the next one, I just want to go to bed. You know, it's, it's a long, it's been a long day. We've, we've had an amazing day and yes, the expectation was there prior to us going out and now I'm tired. Like mm -hmm. getting to, especially when the kids were younger, getting them to bed, if they weren't in bed already, or they would wake up when we'd walk through the door and then we'd have to get them down. So then to really get yourself amped up or myself amped up and ready, I, I've been there as well. Or maybe you've said something like, you know what? I'm just, I'm really just not in the mood. Right. And so there's this expectation, like 65% of you, you know, the expectation is you want to have sex after the date, but then you're coming home and you're being confronted with all of these statements mm -hmm. or, or maybe they're not so direct. Your spouse just simply goes to sleep mm -hmm. or sits on the couch or, you know, you're in this place and, and i and that happens after a good meal and maybe you've had a, a, an amazing dessert, a great time together. And you do, you get home, especially if it's a Friday, mm -hmm. I find that to be for us during the week, especially, you know, getting up five thirty, six AM, working all day, doing things with the kids, blah, blah, blah. By the time you get home, you're you're done. On the weekends, maybe a little different. Maybe on a Saturday, a Sunday, it's a little different. And yet those days can also be a little tough if you're out doing sports, church, volunteer activities, you know, the fair, the festival, concert, whatever it may be. And it's not that there's a lack of good intentions. It's just that more times than I would care to admit, and I'm not putting this on you guys. I just know that um, when we asked, when we asked the one family, 82% uh, of you actually had the same frustration. You had this expectation mm -hmm. that you were going to have sex after date night and were frustrated because you heard something along those lines or the actions came up that said, yeah, what I thought was going to happen is not going to happen. And there is a lot of expectation. There's an excitement. There's, you know, I, I know even from, from myself, it's almost you're walking this on this tightrope mm -hmm. because you don't want the night to go bad. You don't want anything to mess up what's going to be coming after. Right. And when it does, then it can throw you, you into a tailspin of not having sex. Been there too. Well, and it's not even, sometimes it's not even that anything's gone wrong. No, no, no. But I am saying though that sometimes during the date night, mm -hmm. things can, like we could have a conversation that then puts either one of us in a mood. Right. And it's like, oh shoot, now we got to unwind ourselves to get to this place of romancing, initiating, getting into the home and then having sex. And that's, that's happened before. Oh, that's happened many times, you know, because you go out and it's it's a date night, right? Like those of you that have little kids, you you've got the sitter, and you're you're gonna go out, and you don't have to. I mean, it doesn't matter if you have kids or not. Like you don't have to take care of making a meal, mm -hmm. and you know you've got great ambiance. It doesn't. You can be on the beach. You can be at a restaurant. You know the lights, the the food, everything else. You're talking about something besides work and kids, and you know, you just feel this emotional connection, and then then you just you know it like you come home and it fizzles. And, and let me tell you, this can happen for either husbands or wives, right? This is not like always the husband's going out and laying out this great date night and mm -hmm. the wife is like, yeah, I'm not into it. I mean, there are many husbands that come home and they're like, yeah, I, I'm not up for it. And it has such a weight on marriage. I mean, I can think of so many times over the years, you guys, where I would, I, but this was before Tony and I actually started sharing meals because we'd go out and like, we'd eat a ton of food. You know, you go to the Mexican restaurant and you eat all the, the chips and salsa before your meal comes and then you're still eating your meal. And then you're like, I'm so stuffed. Like I can't even move. Yeah. I think for me, the two biggest ones personally for me, when I think of this is either a overeating mm -hmm. be, because we're, we're out we're, we're just enjoying ourselves. Maybe we're having some rich foods, a bigger plate than we would normally have here at home. Uh, I, I think of that. And then I also think of being tired. Mm -hmm. And so we're, those are the two typically that I feel like for myself, when I think of sex after date night, mm -hmm. those are the two that typically I come up against and then go, oh, wow, like I'm home and that bed looks really comfortable. And I just want to read my book and I just want to settle in. Mm -hmm. 
I'm going to get cozy, right? Because, you know, mm -hmm. like I know um, from a lot of the comments that we received from all of you, ladies, you're getting yourself all made up. The hair is getting done. The, the, <laughs> yes. you know, you've got the great outfit on. And you're like, I, you come home and you're like, I just want to get comfy. Mm -hmm. right? And date nights have expectations. They do. It doesn't matter if you're in the dating, you know, before you get married phase or if you, you know, you've been married for a while. There's still a lot of expectation around that time because, you know, by and large, we have limited resources to make date night happen, right? And let's, can, can we just define this a little bit more? Because I think we, we can all have date time, right? And, and maybe we're, we're running to a coffee shop real quick. I think just let's define this a little bit more. This is that, that one night you really get out each month. Mm -hmm. you, and you, know, and you may do it more than once. You may do We're it just... more, but it, it's really, let, let's, put this to a point where it's it's not just the like hey we're just going to go run and get a sandwich for lunch mm -hmm. that this is you know you're you're getting you're getting ready for each other you, 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 like elisa said both of you are getting dressed up it, it's a night out you're going to maybe a play a musical a dinner a movie whatever that looks like for you but there is a lot of anticipation and mm -hmm. expectation in this day or night because th there's a, a build up mm -hmm. And if we talk about the fact that 65% of you expect to have sex at the end of date night, but 82% of you have experienced frustration when that hasn't happened, you know, we get into this place of going, okay, what does this look like? Because when you have those expectations and then they don't turn out mm -hmm. the way that you, the night doesn't turn out the way you expect it to, there can be anger, there can be frustration, disappointment, sadness. There's all these feelings that come to the surface because you have this desire to be intimate with your spouse. And then it feels like you got let down. Right. And, and so as we're talking about that, as I saw that question, you know, it's something that we've wrestled with over the years of saying, who ever said that your sexual intimacy had to come at the end of date night? Mm -hmm. It's like, I've often joked, Moses did not come down with the 10 commandments with 11 commandments. And you know, the 11th commandment said that dinner or that date night was dinner in a movie. Mm -hmm. It also didn't say anywhere on the 10 commandments that sex only comes at the end of date night. But because of, because of what we've all kind of been programmed to think, that's how we, that's how we operate. Yeah. It's kind of like saying that, you know, as adults, we always have to eat dinner before we can have dessert. That's why I love that quote that says, you know, life is uncertain. Eat dessert first. Because sometimes, sometimes having dessert first can be a lot of fun. It can be fun to, to look at this from a different perspective. And, and, you know, I just want to like pose that question. What would it look like in your marriage if you decided to have sex before you went on date night? Mm -hmm. And some of you are just like, uh, but, but I have all these reasons why I can't. And I know you do because you told us, right. You told us about the kids and getting the sitter and your rush trying to get ready. And then you have to get cleaned up after sex and, and you, maybe the emotional connection isn't what you were expecting or, or we're just hungry. And I just want to tell y'all, take a deep breath, take a deep breath, right? Every single one of those you can overcome. And I'm not saying that sex night or sex night, sex before date night is an every time thing. Right. It's not. It's not like we're, we're flipping the, the tables on, you know, when a couple has sex. But I want you to think about having sex before date night as another tool in your marriage toolbox. Because when you do switch it up a bit, it can take away those frustrations that you guys are experiencing. And so by doing that and using it, like thinking through this, okay, it may take a little more effort. Mm -hmm. it, it may take a lot more effort the first few times. And yet what could come out of that though is a new way for you guys to connect sexually. Right. What if we, what if just even by having this conversation, the two of you start stepping into a place where remember that 82% of you mm -hmm. that are frustrated, what if that number came down and there was less frustration in your marriage? Mm. Just think about that for a second. Around, and especially, specifically around your date night and sex after date night. I'm thinking there are enough frustrations in the world that if we could reduce frustration in one aspect of marriage, that would be a win. Oh, heck yeah. 
right? But and we want to talk about like overcoming those objections and finding some opportunities to have sex before date night. But before we do that, we want to thank this week's sponsor. I mentioned at the top of the show, that's KiwiCo. And you know, it's so much fun to have a great subscription box, right? They're the food boxes and the wellness boxes. They're so popular these days. But what about a subscription box for your kids that's fun, educational, and helps them develop creative confidence to change the world? KiwiCo creates super cool hands-on projects for kids to make learning about STEAM fun. And if you've never heard that term STEAM, it stands for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. KiwiCo is designed by experts and tested by kids. Each month, the kid in your life receives a new fun and engaging project with all the supplies they need to challenge themselves creatively. And they've got boxes for kids ages zero to 16 plus. And it's so fun to watch the kids get these projects, put them together and just see their level of confidence. We did this with some friends of ours and their kids were over the top about being able to understand the directions themselves and create their own. There was a robot and a hydraulic claw. It was so neat to see these kids get excited about it. And KiwiCo is a convenient, affordable way to encourage your children to be anything that they want to be. And so for our listeners, if you go to kiwico.com slash one, you're going to get your first month free and every day counts when it comes to making a difference. So don't miss out on this amazing opportunity. Again, go to kiwico.com slash one and get your first month free. That's kiwico.com slash one. So let's start with a simple question as we're talking about sex before date night. And that's asking the question, what is the expectation that we have for sexual intimacy around date night. Had the two of you ever like had that conversation to say, what is, what do we expect when we go out? When we put all of this time and and energy into it, do you expect to be wined and dined before you make the decision to have sex? Somebody actually said that to us. Mm. They said, basically my spouse has to earn Sex on the back, that, that's an expectation. Okay. I expect to be wine sure. and I. Do you expect that it's going to be the nightcap, right? We're going to have this amazing romantic. We're going to connect emotionally. And this is going to be, like I said at the top of the show, the exclamation point on the night. Or is it simply just what you've always done? We mm-hmm. go out. We see how the night goes. We have sex. Uh, well, you need to know. Would, and you look over those three. Would you say each of those have played a part in our marriage over the years? Yes, without a doubt. I mean, there have definitely been seasons in our marriage where I'm like, you better treat me well if if we're going to have sex, Mm, right? I I mean, and and that was more, I think, before we were doing the intimacy lifestyle, before we'd done the 60 days, before the sexual intimacy was a priority, when there was really, um, in my mind, a power struggle around sex in our marriage. I was like, Mm -hmm. you know what? I'm doing all of this and I expect that you're going to take care of me and that's where we're going to go. Yeah. The, we've definitely had those nights where I'm like, this is going to be such a romantic night and then we'll end up back in bed. And, and then there have just been seasons where that's just been kind of the given. I, I would say two and three for me, like, do you want it to be the nightcap? I think that was definitely one of those areas of, for me in our sexual intimacy, that was it. Mm-hmm. And then the third one or, Or is it just what you have always done? I feel like that was also, those two for myself was just like, wow, that's what we've always done. And it is, it's a nice nightcap. It's a way to just end end the perfect date night or the, the best time together. Um, so, it, so it's interesting to see those. The, the first one, I don't feel like I ever was a, like, I need to be wined and dine. I, I do feel like that would come more from a, a wife's perspective. Mm-hmm. And it did show up for a number of wives. Okay. Um, and I could just tell because I, you know, I can see your, I can see your little, uh, your little avatar yeah. on Instagram. So I know if you're a man or a woman. Uh, but we don't ever talk about what are the opportunities to have sex before. And we know I already gave you all the objections, and there's probably a few more. But the reality is, is objections are just opportunities for growth, mm-hmm. right? If you're saying True. this is a problem, if they're saying we can't do this, then. I'm going to challenge you to create the extraordinary. I'm going to challenge you to get creative. I'm going to challenge you to think differently about the sexual intimacy in your marriage. What about when the two of you go on vacation and it's just the two of you, right? What if you know you're going to have, you know, this elaborate meal or it's going to be later or whatever. And you say, you know what, if we're not even starting dinner till nine o'clock or eight o'clock or whatever time you've got a later reservation, what happens if we do this before? Mm -hmm. And then we go out and it doesn't matter how late we stay out because I'm not going to be telling you I'm tired on the back end of this. 
a lot of you threw in the whole kids, either kids are at home or you're getting this or you're doing, okay. There are times, and maybe not when your kids are little, maybe that becomes the vacation thing. But as your kids get older, your kids will be at other people's homes. They may be hanging out with friends. They may be, you know, going out with friends, whatever it is. So when your kids are not at home, don't use them as an excuse. You, you can get creative when your kids are not there. And I would even say one of the best places for us, to, when we start out going towards having sex before date night, it was in the shower. And the, the cool thing with this is if you have an older child, and maybe you have two, right? You have an older child, a younger one. Can the older one watch over the younger one for 30 minutes while you're taking a shower? Which I would say many of us have done at some point in time. So push, push that reservation date uh, time just a little later and get into the shower and make that a time for you guys to connect. Well, and I'm glad you brought that up because... The, the whole cleanup aspect, right? Everybody's right. like, okay, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have to get cleaned up. Well, you just clean up right there in the shower. Make sure you have your lube if you, if you need some, because again, in the shower, it, there may not be a lot of foreplay or maybe you're doing foreplay well in advance. Maybe it is the sexy text messages. Maybe you are calling each other and, and getting each other excited prior to that point. I will say though, for Elisa and I, unless the kids are out of the house, right? Unless everybody's out of the house, before date night sex isn't going to be an elaborate drawn out foreplay type deal. This is a time for us to connect sexually, to have that connection. So we're not waiting at the end where we're going to possibly fall asleep, be full, you know, just want to chill out. Mm -hmm. So you also have to change your expectations around what your sexual intimacy is going to look like. And that's something that the two of you need to discuss because if it's something where you're like, no, I want heavy foreplay. I, we want this together. We, we want to make sure that we're both orgasming. We're, okay. Then that's something that you need to discuss. And I'm not saying we haven't done that. We've done that. Elisa brought up the vacation. Well, when we're away and we've taken the kids to vacations and there are times when we have two rooms or we've, um, the last time when we were in Puerto Rico visiting Elisa's parents, we stayed with her parents and yet we still took a night away and went to our own hotel, went to our own resort and we knew we were going to have dinner later. Guess what? We had sex before mm -hmm. and it was drawn out. We actually even took a nap afterwards. It was just like wonderful. And then we went and had dinner. Well, and I'm glad you brought up that point about expectations and the communication around that too, because you know, there are a lot of you that are like, you know, we really, we want that emotional connection. And it's true when, you, when you're like in between picking up the sitter and getting the kids ready and things like that, the, the emotional connection, this may be those times that you do a quickie. Mm -hmm. and, and can I just actually interject this here is that it's okay to have sex twice in one night, right? Like you could have sex before date oh, night. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Here's even better. Oh and, my and gosh. Here's even Where are you better. Going with this? I, I, no, I'm, no, no, no. Here's even better. So and, and, and it oh. just and it just hit me as yeah, we were no, talking. Going. I love this. Okay. So instead of actually intercourse mm -hmm. and ejaculation, bring each other to a place of almost getting there. And we've done this before. Man, we got to do this again. Getting yourself almost to that point. And here's the tough part. Man, you got to stop. You, you don't keep pushing forward. You don't have sex. And the anticipation... The, the, the heightened sexual desire, because now, hey, you're, you're just in your bedroom. Maybe the kids are doing their thing. Y y guys, y you're doing what you have to do to get your wife to that point. Ladies, you're doing what you have to do to get your husband to that point. But then you stop. And it's at that point that then you get ready. Mm -hmm. And I will tell you, that is unbelievable because date night, you, you're, you're having an amazing time. And yet you're just like, we're doing it when mm -hmm. we get home. And there's just this fun play that has happened between Elise and I sure. on that. Man, I'm 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 like <laughs> so excited about that. We're doing that again. We haven't done that in a while. I like that one. Yeah, there's so often when we do the show, there are just those times when I'm like, I wish you could have seen his face when that thought popped into his head because like just the, the expectation and the excitement around it. But you know, as we talk about this, it's looking at at all of this and saying, what are we what are we crafting for our sexual intimacy? right? Nothing is set in stone. Nothing has to be the way that we've always done it. Would you, would you give yourself permission 
to change things up, to say, what does it look like if we just try something different? What does it look like if we, if we do a quickie or, or we just get to this point of almost before, before our date night. And then on the back end, either we're like, you know what, we're good. And we're just going to come home and go to bed. And we've done that. And I'm telling you, it takes all the pressure off of thinking about what you're eating or what you're drinking or how late you're staying up, you know, or how late you're staying out, I guess I should say, because you're like, we've already, we've already connected. Mm -hmm. Or if you've had this build up and you're like, okay, well, I know we're going to do it, but I thought like, you will be thinking about it all night long. Mm Mm-hmm. The, the innuendo will go back and forth across the table. You'll be thinking about what you're eating or what you're drinking because you're like, I know what's happening on the back end. And to lower that level of frustration, I can't tell you how many times, and, and whether it's coaching calls or whether it's emails that we get, where people are like, we're just so tired at the end of the night. And it doesn't matter if it's date night, if it's Monday through Thursday, people are tired. Mm-hmm. You, you tell us all the time how tired you are. And because of the fatigue, sex doesn't always look the way you want it to. But th- that's just fact. So I want to encourage you this week to think about what would it look like? What would it look like for us to have a quickie? What would it look like for us to, to have sex in the shower? Because let me tell you, like y'all can get cleaned up in the shower and it's going to be good. And you can still, ladies, you can still get your hair and makeup done and, and you can still do all of these things and the kids will still be fine and the, and the babysitter and you know, the great thing about having sex in the shower before date night is that the water drowns out all the noise. So for all of you that are thinking, oh, sex when the kids are awake, um, challenge yourselves. Mm-hmm. That, that, I, th- I honestly believe that's why showers were invented, <laughs> right? Not, not because we needed an alternative to the bathtub, but because the bathtub is not nearly as noisy as the shower. And so to have sex in, the, you know, in another place in the house, let's have a shower. That's right. It's a good thing. Go, go after it. Have fun. I mean, the, the big thing is you got to change that perception, that mindset, your expectations. What's this look like? A lot of this includes your emotional intimacy. You guys got to connect. You got to talk about these things. Mm-hmm. So go after it and do it. Would sex before date night be a game changer in your marriage? Only you two can decide that. So this week, discuss it. Maybe your de- next date night, make it happen. What does it look like? Maybe it's, hey, you come to completion or you bring it right to that edge knowing in anticipation you are going to do it after day night. Whatever you choose to do, we hope you take this to heart and, and, and add this to your marriage toolbox to have amazing sexual intimacy before or after date night. Love you guys. Have a fantastic week and we'll catch you next week. Love you guys.